Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. In Revelation 21.1, the Apostle John wrote, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. On today's program, we'll be studying God's Word on the subject of the new heaven and the new earth. Join me for part three of the message, Heaven, the Best is Yet to Come. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. One man put it this way, he says, there are no crown wearers in heaven if they weren't cross bearers here below. Now, what do you mean by cross bearers? Does that mean I'm suffering all my life and I'm carrying a cross? The cross is a call. The cross is picking up his mission. What, Lord, what's important to you is important to me. Getting the gospel out is important to you, therefore it's important to me. But you know, a lot of people, they, they want crowns in heaven, but they aren't going to carry his call on this earth. Brother Hagin tells about God showed him hell And he made this statement. He says, you know, a lot of times my people, they're in church and they're singing songs about heaven and they're singing songs about eternity. And Jesus told him, he says, but, you know, while they're doing this, they're not mindful of the other side. Not everybody's going to heaven. People need to choose heaven. They don't go there by default. Once you reach the age of accountability, default is hell. After you reach the age of accountability, you have to make a choice, and that choice is, am I going to accept the Lord? So we want to be faithful. We want to do what the Lord would have us to do. What about heaven? Heaven is a place where we're going to fellowship with the Lord. Heaven is a place where we're going to rest. Blessed are those that die in the Lord. They rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. But, you know, some people, this is their attitude. They think, man, it's like a church service that's never going to end. <laughs> And they're like, I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> it's an eternal sing-along. And I, I, don't, I, I don't really enjoy those that much. Y'all, we're going to do more in heaven than just have sing-alongs. It's all eternity. We're going to worship. We're going to serve. We're going to have life. We're going to have fellowship one with another. Somebody say, you think I'll know my loved ones in heaven? You won't really get to know them then until you get to heaven. Maybe we present heaven in such a way where people are like, yeah, you know, so in heaven we're going to have like church like all the time. And if church is anointed, it's good. But how many know not all church is anointed sometimes? It is. It's like pulling teeth, you know. I'm in church on Sundays and Wednesdays to say, yeah, you're the pastor. But before I was ever a pastor. But y'all, I tell you, I worship the Lord working in the yard. I worship the Lord walking. I love to walk and talk to the Lord. I mean, I like that. I love just talking to him. I kind of make sure nobody's around me. So if I'm talking out loud, you know. Okay. What happens in heaven? We have fellowship. We have rest. We have knowledge. It's a place of holiness. It's a place of joy. Enter into the joy of the Lord. This is your eternal place. Whatever the most beautiful forest, waterfall. I don't know what. I like mountains. People like deserts. I mean, whatever it is you like, I like sunsets. You know, I thought I liked the mountains. And then Sharon goes, I don't know. I kind of feel closed in. You know, if you've ever been to Uray, Colorado, it is beautiful. It's like the Switzerland of the U.S. But she said, I don't know. It kind of feels closed in up here. And I got to thinking about that. You know, I do kind of feel closed in up here, you know. I love driving down Route 66 and seeing the sunset. Not everything down here is bad, y'all. There's some beauty around here. Wow, if you like it here, what's heaven going to be like? A thousand times better. I don't want to flip your wig by me telling you that there's an intermediate heaven, but heaven is where the Lord is at. And there will be a time when we're going to live and, and throughout all eternity we'll rule and reign with him and we'll be with him. So heaven is a place of service. It's a place of abundance. How I many you know nobody's broke in heaven? Amen. You know how much stress is on people just because they, they're just broke, you know? I mean, just a lot of stress. Nobody's sick. Nobody's broke. Nobody's arguing in heaven. 
Okay, 1952, there was a young lady by the name of Florence Chadwick, and she stepped into the waters of the Pacific Ocean off Catalina Island, and she was determined to swim to the shore of mainland California. She had already been the first woman to swim the English Channel both ways, so she swam the English Channel and turned around and swam back. First lady to ever do that. The weather was foggy and chilly, and she could hardly see the boats that were accompanying her. Still, she swam for 15 hours. When she begged to be taken out of the water along the way, her mother in a boat alongside her told her that she was close and that she could make it. Finally, physically and emotionally exhausted, she stopped swimming and was pulled out. It wasn't until she was on the boat that she discovered the shore was less than a half a mile away. And then she said at a news conference the next day, all I could see was the fog. I think if I could have seen the shore, I would have made it. You know, y'all, we got to see beyond the fog of our life. We got to see beyond the demons of this world and the problems we deal with and the attitudes of people. We got to look beyond all that and we got to realize there's an eternity out there and Jesus is coming. Whether it's by way of the rapture or by way of the grave, it's not going to be long. Let's just keep running our race right there. And you got to look beyond the fog. And I think that's a great illustration. If I had known I was that close, I could have made it. But y'all, that's why we're walking by faith and not by sight. You don't know when you're about to have the breakthrough. Amen. You know, here they are, six days we walk around Jericho. Wouldn't it have been nice if they had a march around the first day, and when they stopped, they look back at the walls, and they go, they dropped a little bit. In other words, you know, we marched, and they, they're down. I mean, they dropped two feet. Did y'all see that? Let's march the next day. Next day, oh, man, they came down two more feet. We're on a roll here, people. But God didn't do it that way. You know, they marched the first day. They were the same height. The second day, the same height. All the way up the sixth day, the same height. And then on the seventh day, they marched seven times around. You know, they, we say they marched around 13 times. And guess what? Nothing fell until the 13th time around. And guess what? Sometimes when you're walking by the Lord, you're like, Lord, if I could just see that he has any type of change, I would be very happy. You know, you're praying for a spouse or you're praying for somebody. But y'all, we don't get that luxury. We just keep walking by faith. But y'all, the shore's only a half mile away. You just got to push on through and say, Lord, I'm trusting you and I'm believing the breakthrough is coming in my life. That's it. I'm going to walk by faith. D.L. Moody said this, soon you'll read in the paper that I'm dead, but don't believe it for a moment. I'll be more alive than I was ever before. Isn't that great? And then on his deathbed, he said this, earth is receding and heaven is opening before me. When a Christian dies, he or she enters into what is referred to in theology as an intermediate state, a transitional period between life on earth and the future resurrection life on the new earth. Usually, when we refer to heaven, we mean the place that a Christian goes when they die. This is what we are calling the present or the intermediate heaven. When we tell our children that grandma is now in heaven, we're referring to this present heaven. But by definition, an in intermediate state or is a temporary state. The way I would describe it, y'all, let's just say you're taking a trip, like when we're leaving on this next trip to the Czech Republic. So we have a layover. We're flying, I think it's Dallas to Munich, and then from Munich to Prague. Munich is part of the trip, but it's not the destination. I got to go there to get to the other place because there's not a direct flight. So that's the way I want you to think of this is that, yeah, they're in this place. Every need's met. It's a wonderful place, but ultimately there is a, a new heaven and a new earth. God does not change, but clearly the Bible says that the heavens will change and eventually be located on the new earth, Revelation 21 and 1. Just like hell is going to be thrown into the lake of fire, this intermediate heaven that people are in, it'll eventually become this heaven and we're going to be here. This is real to me, y'all. I don't just say this. I mean, it's real to me. And when Keith Moore, he had this uh, visitation, I shared it last week, his father was 68 years old, they're in a plane flying over the Gulf of Mexico. His dad has a massive heart attack, dies in the plane. 
He says, when we get on the ground, he's gone. And he said, for three weeks, I'm just like going, wow, I had plans for my dad. I really wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I wanted to. And he said a couple of things the Lord dealt with me. And he said, the first thing when he said, the Lord said, well, you're going to be able to do things with your dad. It's not over with. It's not like, you know, well, I'm not going to be able. No, he says, you're going to be able to do things. And then secondly, he says, you're really being unthankful because you did have, I mean, you had, you had a good life with him. You had almost 50 years with him. You need to be thankful because there's some people that they never had a dad, that they had a relationship from the get-go. I mean, I know people. For, I had a, a breakfast with somebody not long ago, and they said, no, I've never met my dad. No, I've never met him. I had a chance to, and I thought, at this point, let's just move on, you know. I had a person call me once and say, I'm your stepsister. Do you want to meet dad? And he says, you know, at this point, I think it's just less traumatic. Let's just move from here on out. So what I'm saying is there's some people that grew up and they never had that. And he's like, but you've had a good relationship with your dad. Be thankful for the time you did have him is what he's trying to say. And then he said, three weeks after this death of my father's, he said, you know what it's like to see the same person you buried three weeks ago, to see him 21 days from now there in heaven. He said his hair, when he died, was balding and gray. When I saw him, he had that black hair. He said it was blue-black. It was Elvis blue-black killer. <laughs> Elvis may have had help on that. But anyway, he, and he said we literally walked around just shoulder to shoulder the whole time. We're just walking around. And he said, but you know what my dad's talking to me about? We had a hobbies, but he said the only thing my dad wanted to talk about was the work of the Lord, the ministry, reaching people with the gospel, sharing the good. That's what was on my dad's mind. You know what that tells me, y'all? The more heavenly-minded I am, the more I'm going to be talking about getting God's word out to people and getting people help and sharing the good news. And after I had that experience, he says, you know, from that point on, that spirit of grief, it was gone because I know, trust me, my dad doesn't want to come back. He's in the prime of his life, and, and then he said, he's in your future. If you want to know what's the title of this message, heaven, the best is yet to come. Amen. It is. Amen. And so if somebody passes away, we just say, well, they're, you know, we want everybody to have a long, full life, a healthy life. I believe that's the Lord's plan for everybody. There is a point in a man wants to die. There comes times when people pass from this life and they go on to be with the Lord. I can't pray people out of the gates of death, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray people out of the jaws of death. The end of their life doesn't have to be a horrible, just years and years and years and years of agony. And you say, well, that does happen. And I know it's happened. I've seen it, you know, but I'm going to do everything I can as your pastor, to pray, hey, when the time comes, let's just take one breath here and the next breath there, and let's just go on to be with the Lord. But I don't need any of you. You can't check out yet. we got work to do for the Lord. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, Heaven, the Best is Yet to Come. In 2 Peter 3, Peter wrote how we have a future promise of new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Whether by way of the grave or by way of the rapture, soon we will all be with our resurrected Lord. For the Christian, the best is yet to come. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.